Okay, so we can pick up from where we left. Start the timer. The timer is on. Right, so next test. If we have no questions, it should complete. Yes, completes with empty quiz. With empty quiz. So what we want is to... Right, we want the count to be one. First of all. Yes. What else? We want... The element there to be empty. Right. Yes, exactly. So we can use true here. That's what we want. Beautiful. So we should crash here. Boom. Yes. Error. As expected. So we need to wire the completed quizzes in our spy. And then we need to implement the flow. So our spy up to now is not even implementing that function. Yes. Did complete quiz. And we say completed quizzes. Or append answers. Yes. That should do it here. But it still doesn't pass. Because we need to implement this now in the flow. Right. All we need to do is to call delegate hit complete quiz and just pass an empty array. That should do it. Pass. Beautiful. Let's call meet. So we proved that starting a flow with no questions completes with an empty quiz. Still completes with an empty quiz when using the new APIs. Right. Cool. Next. Back to the test. What is the next one? Now, if we answer the first question, but we have two questions, it should not complete. Right. Because it's right. not completed. Exactly. It does not complete quiz. And the assertion is the same as this one. Yes. Let's see. So I think that should be passing. Perfect. Okay. Proved the flow does not complete the quiz until all answers are received. Yes, I like that. Next one. Start and answer first and second question. Okay, here we go. Now we should complete. Yes. Completes quiz. And here we will have to assert that the questions and answers that we're passing are matching. True. So let me copy this assertion, first of yes, all. Yes, we still want one quiz. We want the quiz at position zero, or the first quiz, the only one received, to be equal, instead of a dictionary, it's an array of tuples. Yes. Question, answer, question, answer. That matches the setup. Yes. And that's not a colon, that's a comma. Right. We can't do that, I think. Okay, this is a problem with tuples. They are not equitable. Yeah, and that was one of the trade-offs we, we mentioned before, that we're going to have this problem with tuples. But I don't think it's that big of a problem, to be honest. The problem is that tuples don't implement equitable. But we can use the array elements equal right. by passing the array that we want to compare and the function to invoke. Since we have the equal equal for tuples, right? Okay, this should work, but this is true now. Search true that it's equal. This is starting to get ugly. So let's make it pass. Yeah, and then we refactor that. Let's go to the flow again. Oh, yeah, that's why it's not passing. Yeah, <laughs> you're always passing on empty array. Yeah, that's fine. So we need to accumulate the questions and answers. Yes, and right now we get this in a dictionary, right? So why don't we create this as, let's say, new answers for now. And this is an array of tuples, right? Right. Let's put that in the list, by the way, just to remind us that we need to rename it. Rename flow.newanswers. Right. Okay, so what we need to pass here is new answers. And in the same place where we accumulate in the dictionary, we can call new answers dot append question, answer, tuple. Yeah, we have everything there. That should do it. Yeah, perfect. Commit. Okay, that's passing. Commit. Let's commit and refactor. Prove the flow still completes with all received answers when using new APIs. Yes. Now we need to clean this up. Yes, let's do that. So why don't we create our own assert equal for array of tuples? Yeah, that sounds good. 
we can give an expected tuple and a base tuple. A1 is an array of tuples, and in this case it's string string for this right. test. I don't think there's any need to make it generic at this point. Let's make this work first and we see how we can improve it. And that's it. Yeah, that's it. I'll copy this here and change it. This is now A1. Yes. Equals to A2 by using the equal equal function for tuples. Right. And we should probably give a nice message now if it fails. Right. Let's say A1 is not equal to A2. Yeah, well, let's make it pass. Now we pass two arrays of tuples. Yeah, that should do. Fantastic. Let's see if it fails. Yeah. Yes, it does. But look. Oh, I see what you mean. We can <laughs> append the exit test types there for the line and the file. Right. If you have a look at the exit assert true function, the two last parameters, file and line, they can put the error in the right place. Right. So we can do the same thing here and give it the file, line, line. Now let's run this again. Let's see if it highlights the right place. Boom, it does. Perfect. That's much better. So let me revert this change. I'm happy with that, but I don't want this function here in the middle of the tests. So let's move it in the helper section. Yeah, and then we can extract it in its own file in the test target if we need to use it somewhere else. Yeah, so far it's only used here, so let's keep it in a closed scope. Absolutely, yeah. Okay, improved test readability with upper function. Yeah. Are we done with this test? I think so. Yeah. Now, what about the scoring? Right, so we don't care about scoring right now. Not anymore. Yeah. Let's make a note. Yes. Remove the flow dot scoring dependency. Yes. Fantastic. So from this list, anything we can do right now? Why don't we rename the handled questions in the delegate spy? Yeah. What should it be? Well, it's like what questions have we provided? So provided questions, perhaps? What do you think? Asked questions? Yeah. Questions asked, yeah. Cool. Okay, improved property name to clarify intent. Yes. That's it. So we are done with okay. these handled questions. So this is gone. And then we should probably have a look at the scoring function there. We don't care about scoring anymore. So do we need these tests? Well, the old client implementation will need them. Yeah, but we have integrated tests. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. We can remove them from here and let the deprecated game deal with this. But before we do this, let's see what other tests have dependency on this function. Right. What right. if we remove the scoring from here? Right, that should be fine. Yep. Perfect. So actually, I don't need to give a scoring here, which will lead me to have a look at the flow. Okay. Tomato is done. Cool. Good timing. What we can do here is just to give a default implementation. Yes, that's one way to do it. Or we could make it optional. Right. Another way would be to have a new initializer and provide the default value inside the initializer implementation. Yeah, luckily we have a lot of options and we have integrated tests that proves that we still have the scoring function. Yes. For example, yes. if we go to the deprecated game tests, we can prove that it's still scoring because the test is passing. Right. And what about the property in the flow? Yeah, we still need it here because that's how it's scoring. Right. So this is one step. At some point, we're going to remove it. Perfect. It's here. Perfect. Remove the flow scoring dependency. Perfect. So let's commit this. Provide a default scoring function while we can't remove it. Right. And this is going to facilitate the segue that is coming. This is like an intermediate step. Exactly. If we get rid of the concept of scoring, then we can get rid of the dictionary of question and answers and the result. Right. So we are getting there. Yeah, let's do it in the next tomato. Bye, y'all. Mm -hmm.